Oil's got petroleum hydrocarbons, it's got polyaromatic hydrocarbons, it's got benzene, it's got what are called semi-volatiles, which is the materials that don't vaporize, and then of course the black goo. When we look at oil and the toxicity of oil, uh, most of the literature talks about fresh oil. Well, what we're dealing with here is oil that was released a mile deep, uh, mixed with dispersants, and now appearing on the surface. So now, what's in that oil? Uh, we don't know for sure. Uh, we know that it's a cocktail of dispersants, which are chemicals that break up oil, and the oil, and what you call weathered oil. Uh, recently, uh, I work with the uh, pediatric center, and we have looked at some of the issues as it relates to children. And in general, children should not be uh, working or playing on beaches that are contaminated and should be kept away uh, from, uh, from the oil spill issues. What do they do with their hands? What goes in their mouth? Virtually everything goes in their mouth. So they're going to play in the sand. Maybe they're going to play catch with a tar ball. Who knows? And, and then, you know, it goes in the mouth. Ch children have mouthing behaviors. They're also very exploratory. They'll pick something up that they haven't seen and look at it and they taste it. Uh, the other thing is they don't have, the develop, they don't have fully developed uh, systems to handle chemicals, particularly chemicals that might affect the brain, the nervous system. Uh, we all have the pretty much defenses against that. It's called a blood-brain barrier in an adult, but children don't have that. Young children don't have that. So if there are substances in the oil or in the uh, gabash that ends up on the beach uh, that are, as we call, neurotoxins, they affect the nervous system, then a child would be at much more risk because of both their behavior and because of uh, their susceptibility. Acute exposure to uh, cleanup operations in general uh, generally are related to dermal irritation of the skin. And if there are vapors present, in other words, it smells bad, there may be some inhalation hazards that would exacerbate uh, many cases, many pre-existing conditions like asthma. Uh, the working on the beach with, with goo, tar, whatever, uh, there probably would not be much in the way of inhalation hazard because most of that is gone by now. You have to remember that the Gulf, is, the Gulf temperature of the water is 85 degrees and the temperatures are uh, 95, 100 degrees this time of year. So anything that is vaporous is going to eventually disappear. So the acute exposure on land uh, would primarily be skin contact with the materials and uh, perhaps uh, the movement of, of uh, material from the hands to the face uh, by just general uh, uh, habits, if you wish. The short answer is we really don't know what the chronic impacts are. And uh, perhaps this is a good point to bring up uh, something that uh, is called the precautionary principle. And that is, if we know about something that might be hazardous, but we don't have proof that it is, we should take precautions to avoid exposure as much as possible by wearing personal protective equipment, by staying away from the area unless you absolutely have a need to be there. So in terms of what kinds of possible long-term effects, we do know that some of the components, some of the volatile or vapor components of fresh oil have substances in them associated with cancer. But as we said before, most of these volatile components will dissipate in the hot sun and in the temperature, in the, uh, in the Gulf, warm Gulf waters. So that's not likely to be a problem, but the short answer is we really don't know.
for the volatile components, uh, there are means to assess human exposure of the materials that, they, that gets in their body. For instance, naphthalene is a component of the polyaromatic hydrocarbons that I mentioned earlier. These can be changed uh, within the body, biotransformed in the body, to a chemical that can be monitored in the urine of individuals that would reflect their exposure. Uh, we don't have information to know how much of this is bad, but it could be used to assess exposure. When the volatile components are gone, one could also do that for benzene, uh, but when the volatile components are gone, there is really no uh, established techniques to assess whether uh, the material you get on your skin uh, or you ingest uh, reflects uh, something that's a, shall we say, a body burden.